Hello, in this video, we're going to cover how to set up a zap so you can automate the process of sending the leads that come in from lead gen forms on a LinkedIn ad campaign to a Google Sheet, and even setting up an email to notify the client that they have uh, received a lead. So first you wanna get your um, tabs ready of the things, of the different uh, programs and, and things that you're gonna need for it. One is gonna be Zapier, where you're gonna be setting up the automation. Another is gonna be a Google Sheet. And then also the account that you're gonna be setting up the um, lead gen zap from. So uh, to get started, one of the first things you'll wanna do is go to your lead gen form. And once you open it, you're going to need to put the information that you're asking for. You're going to have to title your document with that information. So for example, I'm going to bring over this spreadsheet and we're going to need to label these columns. So a good flow is typically maybe first name, last name, email address, and LinkedIn profile URL. So since that's the information that this client wants on their lead gen form, that's what we can pull into the spreadsheet. So um, let's go ahead and open up the Zap now and start building that. So you'll notice we have a folder in here called LinkedIn Ad Zaps. So that's a, a good place to house any um, kind of automation or zaps that you're going to be doing for LinkedIn campaigns. Uh, so far, we've specifically been making these for our um, ad clients, excuse me, for our lead gen forms. So all you have to do is come over here to create zap. Now, remember, all Zapier does is it connects things, right? It says if something happens over here, then we want something else to happen over here. Um, in this case, we're saying, hey, we want to pull anytime a lead comes into a lead gen form, we want that to populate on a Google Sheet. So we can start typing in LinkedIn, and you'll notice LinkedIn lead gen forms pulls up right here at the top. For the trigger event, that's saying what's going to trigger this automation happening. And for us, that's going to be new lead gen form response. Okay, now it wants you to choose um, an account, and this is which which profile or LinkedIn account is this under. So for most cases, the JD uh, Stout account should be also connected to those clients. There's a couple of clients that only add uh, the account manager's account, but you, you could either look up your own account, and, and if you have never done this before, you can go down here to connect a new account and connect your, your LinkedIn profile to Zapier. Um, or for this example, we'll go ahead and use the JD Stout account. All right, now we want to set up the trigger. Like, wh where is this coming from? So the account name is the Light Digital. And then it'll have you choose the form. What's the lead gen form that, that we're using? That's the form that we're saying when it gets responses or leads. We want them to pull into that that spreadsheet. So we are using lead gen form June 23rd. We'll hit continue. And now we'll test this trigger. Now keep in mind, if it has not received any leads to date, it's going to come back and said, we haven't found a form response. Right? That doesn't mean it's not working correctly. It just means there aren't any responses yet. So you can still build out the rest of it and still when a, when a response or lead comes in, it'll populate. But if you get that, that message, it just means there's, there's no responses for it to find yet. So there's nothing for it to pull. In this case, we already have responses. We already have leads on those lead gen forms. So it's saying, hey, we've, we found a response there. Everything's good. So then we'll go to continue. Okay, so if initially we're saying, well, we want this to happen to go to do that, right? Well, the this was the lead gen form response and we set up that trigger. Now, the next thing we wanted to do is, hey, when you when a, when a lead comes in, I want it to trigger the automation and send that information into a spreadsheet. 
But if you start typing, you'll see Google Sheets. And if you started the spreadsheet, it'll automatically be under your, your Google account, right? So what I'm going to put is Google Sheets, the action event. I wanted to create a spreadsheet row. So I want when new information comes in here, I want a new row of information. Now, just a tip I'm going to say for now is don't format the top um, the column titles yet. Uh, you'll be able to do that after. The reason I say don't do it now is because the format of the following line will match the format of the line above it. So if, if you put some kind of uh, color, like you fill this in with color and bold it, then every line's going to come out that way. So wait until the test line goes in or till you add the other information and then come back and format the, the, format the titles. So um, we have that in here. We could even name the spreadsheet. We'll say light digital lead gen form. Okay, and again, we wanted to create spreadsheet row. Then we'll hit continue. Now it's saying, well, which Google Sheets account is this coming from? Again, if you've never connected your Google account, you can do that here, connect a new account. Um, in this situation, this spreadsheet is from my personal, so I will put that in there. You'll select, it's from your Google Drive, whichever one that you just put that the accounts you're using. And then let's find this spreadsheet. So I named it Light Digital. There it is. The worksheet means the tab on the bottom. So if you have different lead gen forms doing different things, for example, you maybe have some lead gen forms that have case studies and other lead gen forms that ask them to book a call, right? You can have two down here and you can set up a zap for each of those different sheets. In this case, we only have one sheet. We could rename that sheet. We'll just leave it as sheet one for now. But if we go back here, we're going to pick worksheet, sheet one. Now, you'll notice it's going to automatically pull in the titles I have on the columns. So these were the, 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 these are the titles I put into these columns. So if you go back here, it automatically populated those. Now, you're going to have to put in these what data you want to appear. So it picked up the name of the column. That doesn't mean it knows what data you want in that column. So pretty simple, though. First name, we're going to choose first name here. You'll click in the next box, last name. Well, we want last name. Email address, email address. Now you'll notice this isn't one of these easy uh, to see options here. Simply start searching it up. Maybe just put URL, LinkedIn profile URL. And we'll hit continue. Now it wants us to set up the action. So we want to test. Okay, test was successful. So what it's saying is it was able to find that data and then move it over to our lead gen form. So let's check it out. And there it is. So at the, we could see the Zap is working. It pulled in the information from the lead gen form and populated it into our Google Sheet. So now we could actually format this, these cells now. You might want to put some type of fill color in here. Maybe bold. Feel free to use whatever type of formatting you want. But now as the new uh, columns, or excuse me, as the new rows populate in here, it's going to follow the line above it. So it'll it'll format with this regular text versus coming out bolded with that background cell color. So that's great. Now, um, for this client and probably many other clients, they're going to want a, an additional step of emailing them to notify them that they've gotten a lead. So you can just hit this plus sign here. Oop, that is um, not accurate. So let's... Go back to the setup. Here we go. So we have the trigger. We have the action. And now what else do we want us to do? What's next? So we're going to type in here email. Email by Zapier. You'll notice this is really straightforward. Um, when a lead comes in and it populates in the Google Sheet, we want it to then send an email. We find an email by Zapier. Put send outbound email. Now, who is this going to? Who are we emailing? So for this 
for this client, there's going to be two people we're emailing. So let me get those and put those in here. Put a little comma. There we go. Subject. New link and lead. You can call it whatever you want. Now the body. So now we want to put some of that data that we put into the spreadsheet. We also want that to come out in the email. So we'll put hello team. We have a new lead. Information is as follows. Here's the info. And here, uh, much like the other cells that we we're filling in with what data we want, we can simply put, uh, let's title it first name. And then I'm going to hit this here, this new lead gen form response, and put first name. Last name. Email. Link in profile URL. Now this can even go in white label situations because we get to put who this is from. So we might finish this off with good luck. And we can put anyone here that we want to. So if it's a white label situation, you can either put the client's name. Um, you don't have to put anything in here. We'll put impactable team. It's impactable. You don't have to put a reply to you, copy uh, if it, if the client wants someone else copied or blind copied, we could do that, but in most situations we're not going to need that. So this is just going to send them an email that says new LinkedIn lead gen form response. And then the body will say, hello team, we have a new lead. Here's their info, first name, last name, email, LinkedIn, your profile, and good luck. And again, feel free to put whatever you want in there. Um, this is just very, you know, very basic outline, but if you want to get creative with it, if you want to put something different, feel free to do so. So all this, you don't have to fill that in. We'll simply go to continue. And for the most part, uh, we don't need to put, we don't need to test this part. Um, you can test it and let the client know like, hey, you're going to get a test email. I just sent this out. Um, or you um, can skip the test. And then uh, once they get a new lead, you could double check with them that it's working. So it's whatever you want to do. If you have that, if you want to have that communication with your client, simply let them know. Be like, "Hey, I'm going to send you a test. Um, it's one of the leads you already had, but I'm just you know testing out this new process." So, um, in fact, what we'll do is we will go ahead and test it for this client uh, just to make sure that way he can let us know if there's any problems. And we'll see what he says. But it looks like the on our end, an app on email was just sent. Everything else looks good. So the last thing we have to do is turn on Zap. Now you are going to get this uh, extra question. It says, uh, your Zap is on. Do you want to transfer existing data? Yes, I want to transfer the existing data. It's going to pop up for many leads that were already in there.
Right now it's finding those records. It will populate here in a second. So this has his test data also. You can see that he did some, some test leads. You can also see that in the actual account itself. If you come over here and you go back to where those main lead gen forms are, you'll see test leads, three test leads. That means he was testing them himself. So he did get them. Um, now you could also see that that Randy Morgan is the one that pulled in when we were testing it. So we don't need to pull in that one, but we can select Sean Lucas, Christine Howard, and Beth Payne. Okay, this should finish here in just a second. You can see they've all already populated in here. Um, I'm pretty sure that sent a test also of all of these um, to the client, which isn't really a bad thing. Client would love to know, uh, you know, when we're um, that it's working and to see that they are getting these leads. So, you know, it's no big deal. And as you can see, it came um, back over here now. One thing that I left out of this. So we do want to make sure we're appropriately naming our zaps or else it can get very, very messy in here. So luckily we saved them in here. So we know that um, it's it's one of these zaps because neither of these are named. Uh, this one says July 13th. So I'm pretty sure this is our zap here. So we'll just want to go in here and, and um, name it. So up here on the upper left-hand corner, you'll see it says name your, dat, name your zap. We can put like digital lead gen form. And that's it. That would save in there. And now it's easy to find that one in your zaps. If you ever need to go back into that zap for any reason, do anything with that zap, um, it should be in here, light digital lead gen forms. So I hope that helped you learn how to set up a, a Zap in Zapier to connect your lead gen forms to both a Google Sheet and also to um, send an email out. Um, I realized there's, there's one other thing that I usually include in these. So if I go, let me go back into the Zap. What I'm doing is I'm going back to that sheet and I'm, I'm going to get a link to it. Since it's going to the client, I'm going to make an editor link. Let me copy that. I'm going to go back into that email. I'm going to add another line in here. We're gonna we're gonna pop that in there um, into I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop that into the Google Sheet. Uh, excuse me, I'm gonna pop the Google Sheet into the Zap because you know they'll, they'll get the information for that Zap if they want to easily access that Google Sheet. That'll be included in all the emails as well. Okay, with that update, let's make sure it looks good. That all looks like it looks great. So I'm going to skip the test on this one. We already sent him some, some other tests, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that zap back on. And then we'll just verify with the client that they received the zaps. So let me know, of course, uh, if you have any questions. Don't hesitate to contact myself or any of the other leaders, and we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you so much.